Today, we're gonna shoot panorama. I'm gonna cover the few things you need to know about how to make a good panoramic picture. So first of all, of course, goes without saying, we need a location. And uh, right now I'm located at a beautiful place. It's called Klevava. It's located just outside of Reykjavik, uh, 15, 20 minutes. And a very popular place, you know, especially in the, uh, because it's a lake, people come here a lot when they are expecting northern lights and stuff like that. But it is also good for today, today's demonstration to cover how I do panorama pictures. So about here, let's set up here. And uh, while I set up, let's take a look at the uh, place from above. set up uh, apart from this little guy here the rod or nodal slider as people like to call it when the camera is set up like this it is revolving around the sensor of the camera and that's wrong because the image comes in here to the lens and then it projects to the sensor of the camera and this point is called the nodal point and it's different in every lens it's usually you know somewhere in the front so this is a nice tool which you would use to move the point from the camera to the lens let me show you So now I'm set up here in my studio and I'm going to try to explain to you what I mean with nodal point, parallax and a nodal slider. When I shoot, let's say from left to right, it can be the other way around also. What you will see is, I'm going to turn on record here. I have a C stand here right in front of my camera. I have another stand, light stand, directly behind this C stand. And uh, as you can see now, when I turn my camera, now you cannot see the other light stand. And now it's peaking in this direction and it's peaking in the other direction. This is what we call parallax. If I'm shooting, if I'm shooting a, a panoramic picture with a foreground which is relatively close, and then a background, this is with my foreground, and the light stand would be my background, the uh, the plane would would kind of not be aligned like it should be. So it will be difficult to stitch those uh, images together in post. Uh, may be possible, it depends on uh, how much the distortion is, but even if you can stitch them together, there will always be like some uh, problems with the image you need to fix in Photoshop, and it's better just to get it right, right off the bat. So now, I'm gonna put on the rod. The uh, image is projected to the sensor of the camera from the lens. So the image comes into the lens. Uh, 
somewhere in the lens is a point called the nodal point, nodal point, and uh, it protects in the camera, and then the lens protects it to the sensor. Okay, this needs to be our our center. So uh, now, when I'm not completely at the camera back like I was, let's say halfway is. So now when I move it, I can still see the light stand peeking behind it, but it's not as much. So if I put it more, and now I move it, now it's almost not moving, maybe a little bit more. There we go. So it's different with every lens and uh, it's nice just to, uh, there's a, you can just to memorize it or put a tape or something on the uh, measurement here so you can uh, remember what uh, the value is for, for each lens. This is really important if you have a, a strong or, or a foreground object that is close. If you're shooting with a, with a zoom lens, something in the, di in the distance and there's no real foreground, the dis it's not, it doesn't matter. You don't need to do this with that. But you know, if you have something pretty close to you, like a meter away or something, this is what you should use. It's a simple thing. It's just this little piece of metal. This is from Real Right Stuff. It's surprisingly expensive, but you know, because it's kind of like, yeah, it's just this. But, uh, it makes all the different. And uh, it's, you know, when you buy stuff like this, ball hat or something like this or tripod, don't go for the cheap stuff because you want it to be steady. You don't want to be able to move the camera because when you're shooting a panoramic image and one image of the sequence is off, the whole sequence is done and you have to do it again. So that's parallax and nodal point. Enjoy. Now you should know everything you need to know about how to set a nodal point on your slider. So I'm going to do that here. I kind of lost my. Uh, I kicked the tripod, so I'm not leveled anymore. And that's not good. There we go. All right. Now we have a little more sun than before. So now I'm set up at my null point. I'm going to shoot at an ISO 100. And I'm going to be at uh, aperture 16 because I want everything kind of nice in, in focus. Then I'm just gonna adjust the speed accordingly. I'm gonna set the focus point. So everything is manual. White balance is manual. I'm set to daylight. ISO is 100, as low as you can go. Uh, aperture, I want everything sharp and nice. So I'm at F16. And uh, then I just uh, uh, set the speed accordingly until my histogram is uh, within bounds. And uh, I'm ready to go. So then I shoot first emit. Then I need to overlap my first emit with my second Im emit. About 30%-ish, you know, 30 to 50%. Uh, it's better to overlap more than less. And also, I did expose for the brightest part of the image, meaning the sun is there and not there, 
So when I was pointing my camera there, that would be the brightest picture. So I'm, I, I expose for that, then I keep the same exposure. Uh, so it's gonna be, it, it might be a little bit too dark when I'm at the end, but that's, that's all good. I, I'm not clipping in the histogram, and the point was to not clip the highlights. So, this is, this is done. I always do a backup. Because like, you know, if something happens, if you kick the tripod, if you do anything with one picture of the sequence, it's done, it's, it's ruined. So, I'm gonna do another one. Set the focus again, shoot. Overlap, about 30%. like that so why do we need panoramas it's like for example this scene here is too wide for my lens i could do a wider lens i might get it all but then the mountain the small mountain in the background they would be even smaller uh, so uh, it, the scene wouldn't be as compressed and uh, also, there would be a lot of stuff in the frame I don't want. A lot of ground, a lot of sky. You know, there is a lot of ground and a lot of sky anyway, but more, I don't know, uh, that, that, that just would look nice. And also, when you take a wide shot, but you only need a tiny part of it, you, you're gonna cut a lot of uh, pixels away from your, uh, from your photo and you will, and, you'll end up with really a low resolution file. So yeah, that's why. So now let's see what we can do with this in post. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. And uh, I took, I took three, <clears throat> I made three panoramas and I'm gonna select the middle one here. Uh, it consists of six images. Here's four, here's five, here's six. Uh, it's probably gonna give us very similar results, uh, but I kind of usually go for more images than less. Sometimes Lightroom has problems uh, merging these pictures together, and there is really nothing you can do about it if Lightroom refuses to do it. Sometimes you could like skip one image and you can, you can do tests like if I'm, if this is not happening, I could try to do, do with these five or, or maybe, maybe just four, you know, usually somehow I'll manage to do it like this. And if it's really important, I, I will just add the last one in, in Photoshop. If it's at the end, if it's in the center, it's obviously not possible. So. But here I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's, it's, the, the tripod was pretty leveled. Uh, I'm using my normal slider. There is absolutely no reason why this picture should not merge. So let's try it. Right click, photo merge, panorama. And now we're gonna get a preview of these six images stits with a cylindrical projection. Here we go. Like I told you, I was very leveled. Uh, uh, my tripod was leveled when I shot the picture, so you can see there's very little space, a very evenly, very even space here at the top, bottom, top, top and bottom, uh, almost none. There's always something in the corner, but that's just uh, how it is. The um, projection options are there are three in Lightroom and uh, in, in other softwares, you could see more of those. But it's just how Lightroom stitches these images together. And uh, usually just, you know, try them all, see what fits best. But the rule of thumb is like the cylindrical, what, what I use uh, most of the time. If you get a single row, you know, long panorama, 
that works very well. Cervical is like, for example, if you're doing a 360, uh, you would use that. And also uh, when I'm doing like many rows, like this is just one row. If I would do two rows or three rows, cervical is usually what works best for that. And perspective is, um, you know, for example, if you're using, if you're, if, if you're doing a, a, an architectural panorama and your lines need to be straight, perspective is uh, something you should try to do. I also find that perspective uh, works really well when I'm doing like a vertorama, when I'm shooting from uh, the, 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 the bottom to top, uh, there is all this, this kind of uh, perspective distortion. And I find that perspective uh, protection works re really well for that. Uh, I could do auto crop here. And in this image, I'm gonna crop this image more. So in this image, it's fine. But sometimes when I do auto crop, you know, maybe it crops too close to something on the picture, so it, so it, so it looks too tight. And you know, I don't control. I'm not in control when I do auto crop. So uh, what I usually do, I crop the image. I, I just merge it, and I crop the image like I want it to be. And if I have some spaces in the corner or something, I just do content aware fill in, in Photoshop. However. I have this guy here, this boundary wrap. And uh, what it essentially does, it just stretches the image to the edges. For example, in this image where it was so small, it actually does a really, really good job. And I, I done this with photos that had a lot of uh, uh, space uh, to fill up. And I think it actually does a better job than the content of airfill but you know don't take my word for it each image it has its own uh, thing so you know there's no right or wrong here just you know try it see if it works for you when I'm done I just hit merge so here we go uh, my panorama is uh, there now I would maybe do my cropping. Let's try 16 by nine and reduce a little ground. Let's try that. I, I did not use any filters. Uh, when I shoot panorama images, I try not to. Um, if I need to, uh, if, if, if the dynamic range is just too much for my camera, I bracket the shot uh, rather than uh, use a filter. You could essentially use like a, a gradient, gradient filter, you know, but try not to use like a polarizer. A polar, especially when you have a, 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 a blue sky like this, you're gonna see the polarizer, even if used, used modestly, it, it creates a little weird shadows in, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the picture, especially in the sky. You know, if it, if it used nicely and moderately on a normal picture, you won't see it. But if you try to, if you do it on a, on a six, image uh, panel and then you stitch it together you might see some strange shadow some weird uh, darker spots here and there in, in the clouds and you don't want that so there you have it everything you needed to know about panoramas at least a good foundation if you like this video please feel free to watch my other videos like it, subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the uh, notification bell because it's you you ain't gonna my videos ain't gonna show up on your feed even if you subscribe to my channel so 
if you want to get notified when I upload, hit that bell. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, bye.